Welcome to 50 Laps My Way with Tony Morakovic. Perfect. Slam dunk. And Spotter Brian. And Spotter Brian. Most important part. Nice, nice intro again. <laughs> I like it. You're welcome. I think we got it right. We, we, that's something we need to record for sound. Yes. Right? We can yeah. get consistent with it. So, um, all right. So, episode four, I believe it is. Um, couple things have changed. The last uh, episode here on 50 Laps My Way, we talked about, I think, the Pocono race, the Dirt Legend flip. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we even did some more short track local racing talk. We had uh, team members of TMR on, CJ and Jesse. Mm-hmm. It's great. Your son and daughter-in-law. Mm-hmm. It's awesome having them on. Hopefully we can have them on again. Um, so uh, since then, we got to do a truck at Las Vegas with Joni Machek. I know. How was that, buddy? It was It was good. It was a uh, good run. I missed you there. I wanted you there. Somebody had to keep the doors open here. Yeah. Yeah, that's what people, if you're <laughs> ever a guest here, you'll be lucky enough to see all the behind-the-scenes um, business that goes on in here, not just building race cars and trying to get funding for race cars, mm-hmm. but selling hardware, fun stuff. Um, but we got the crib upstairs. So Nuts and bolts. Make it Nuts go around, buddy. Oh, yeah. A lot of patience. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, it was a uh, good weekend. First time. I've I've been to Vegas before, but first time I've been at the racetrack. And um, it's a very cool racetrack. Uh, I'll be honest. As a fan, I really don't like mile and a half, but I have enjoyed racing them so far. Well, eh, I mean – I enjoyed my first experiences with them. I'll say that, but okay. I will. I'll be honest. Later in the race, when you get the air taken off you, or you lose the air on the nose, <laughs> and you can't pass, um, that's annoying. Now, how close is that track to Texas? I mean, they're, they're basically they're, they're, they were the so-called "quote unquote" cookie cutter tracks. Exactly. But are they really cookie cutter? Or is there, what's the big differences? I bet if you looked at. Um, Texas like six years ago before they did the reconfiguration I bet they were pretty darn identical okay. uh, turn one and two has always kind of flattened out on exit so that might have been different even back then but um, now that they've widened it um, and kind of decreased the banking which I don't really understand at all um, you know we all kind of know that once you decrease the banking at a racetrack you're you're gonna lose that outside groove exactly so yeah. you're kind of limited at that point yeah so why make it wider i never i hate to be critical but we all know that nobody's ever going to use that bit of racetrack <laughs> at, at like even when it gets older it's not going to turn into atlanta it's too far out that i mean it's as wide as michigan but it's flat like mm-hmm. I, I don't know so um i know i'm a d-bag for being a critical guy here but i just i don't know i never saw it um <laughs> but Fun racetrack to drive still. I mean, technically, even turn three and four, which is kind of like the old version. Uh, they didn't really do anything over there. You can't be up top. Okay. So it's just it's something about that place. Uh, that's why I love Vegas, though. I mean, I, I didn't think it could get more fun than Texas. Like, Texas was fun just because of how fast it felt. Um, just uh, obviously something we all love. Sure, you're going fast everywhere, but to have almost the same speeds that you do at Daytona and Talladega, but – then to have a mile less to do it um, is, is a blast and uh, definitely feel like you're on the edge there. And Then, um, yeah, going to Vegas uh, was a little nervous. I mean, we've been struggling in, in early speed and in the weekend with practice and qualifying just because of me not ever, one, being to the most of the racetracks and still being my fourth time out in the truck, third officially. Mm-hmm. Um you know, it's 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 hard to, to be quick at the off the bat. So um, John Hunter was running with us, and I, I got to talk to Brett Moffitt a lot. So those guys really helped me. Joe, of course, really helped me out. We were able to, I think, end up 15th or 16th in practice, mm-hmm. way better than I'd ever been in practice. So it was cool. Um, was hoping uh, we could do, do better in qualifying, but, like, I was expecting around the same spot, 15th or 16th. We qualified 22nd at Pocono, so mm-hmm. I'd have been happy with that. Um, and we ended up qualifying 12th, so that was uh, pretty awesome. It was uh, nice. I mean, that was an eventful qualifying 
uh, stage for NASCAR to have two wrecks. And they ironically were right before my run. I know, I know, I know. It's and, and you got some love, some TV love. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think uh, Michael Waltrip said um, um, because you actually you came back in because you had to cool the truck down. Because mm -hmm. you were on the track when the first wreck happened, correct? Exactly, yeah. So they let you come back in, cool the truck down while they red flag, cleaned up the mess. And uh, I think he uh, mentioned um, – that, that you're happy to let somebody else go for a while? Yeah. Or yeah. get cooled the truck down? Exactly. It's like, I mean, qualifying is always, even when you can have, I think we had 40, ironically, actually, fun fact, I don't know if I told you this, our fastest lap in practice was lap 43. Okay. That was pretty weird. But, um. It is cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, we, um, oh, yeah, but when you're out there in practice and, like, usually that lap is, like, in the run, like you go out and you kind of tiptoe for a few laps, and uh, you know, lap two maybe, lap three is, is when you go full bore. I mean, you have to be wide open there, and um, it's it's you know pretty easy to get comfortable wide open there. I mean, there is a lot of grip when you're by yourself. Um, mm -hmm. But we ended practice I think at ten o'clock, and uh, qualifying was until I think by the time I rolled out would have been like three. So Joe was out in the Xfinity car. And I think even a cup car in practice, and he like he told me earlier that morning. He said, "Oh yeah, he'll be wide open, easy for qualifying, easy." And he comes in out of the cup car. And he's like, "Man, three and four is slick as hell. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't so easy." Yeah, was and it? I was like, "What do you mean? Like you don't know? Like <laughs> it's it's I only get one shot at this. It yeah. could go very well or could not." And um, did they spray that track at all? Oh, uh, they did not. Which okay. which I liked, um, but. So, so yeah, I mean, it was, that was scary. So he's like, he goes over to the guys, he's like, yeah, tighten him the hell up. Like, then, like, we're watching. I mean, they ain't taking a round out, man. They're taking, like, four. <laughs> and it's like, oh, boy. You know, so um, I got in and was a little nervous. But I was like, I mean, it felt so good in practice. I, you know, we had more tape on it. Like, our mock run in, in practice was pretty lean. Um, we didn't go as hard at it. Mm -hmm. um didn't have it as trimmed out and so um i was pretty confident going into that and uh going on to the racetrack felt good like that's the thing the whole run is starts as soon as you leave pit road i mean you have to leave hard um and me and a lot of guys stalled it at pocono didn't stall it this time so that was a good thing um <laughs> and got onto the track pretty good and i didn't use enough racetrack at one and two i noticed I just, as soon as you drive straight up onto the banking there, right off of pit road, okay. and um, I just didn't expect it to have so much grip, and I kind of <laughs> yanked it down, and it was like, whoa, like straight to the white line, um, so scrub some speed there, and then I was thinking about it going down a back stretch, like, oh, shit, I might have just screwed up the whole run, um, but then, then the caution lights came on, and uh, I wasn't sure, like, nobody was saying anything on the radio. So I didn't lift, um, going into three hard. Really? Like, yeah. I mean, it was like making it to pit road was, was rough. Um, finally, somebody came on the radio. It was like, shut it off, shut it off, shut it off. So, like, they weren't even telling me that there was a wreck happening or that you need to pull in. They were like, just shut the motor off to keep it cool. Um, and then when they said that, I figured, okay, yeah, I guess I'm coming in. Um, and, uh really try to be easy on the brakes didn't want to you know flat spot anything lock anything up um use a ton of racetrack in three and four really went up top to try to come down on the pit road kind of hard and um at that point the 56 was crawling uh, through the infield mm -hmm. across pit road and didn't really see me coming so you can kind of see that on tv <laughs> um he was just slowly creeping on the pit road and then you kind of see me come in behind and tv don't do it justice i was hard on the brakes i mean like i thought he was parked i didn't know what the caution was for debris mm -hmm. or what um and then he comes right across pit road like that and uh i was pretty upset about that too um and and plus two now i have the motor off and now i'm like about parked so now i got fired up again and it's squirting water and like Jerry's yelling me on the radio to keep the thing off, and now I gotta turn it back on to to roll down a pit road for a sec, and then um, we get there and uh, 
honestly, that was such a blessing, though, because John Hunter was, I think, r- he was right behind me. Yeah, I saw that. So they sent him out, and I was able to turn to his radio, and uh, obviously Joe did too. And um, I don't think he had a crack in three, but he said it was free. So he had just a little wiggle in the, in the wheel, and mm-hmm. um, and so he was able to come on the radio and quick tell us that, so Joe knew to tighten me up even more. So now I'm like, dang, this is <laughs> – this is uh, worse than what we had thought. I th- I was you know thinking at the time, and of course now I'm I'm in the truck and sitting and baking and yeah, it was like a hundred degrees. Oh, it was awful. It was grasshoppers everywhere. Yeah, it was so awful. That sun was just a magnifying glass to that windshield. No water, nothing, and um, I really didn't. G- I was hoping the engine would just cool down quicker, and it wasn't. So they let four or five guys go. Then Jesse wrecked. Um. Saw that whole thing in a mirror, and that's just like, man. That was scary. That was yeah. a scary-looking wreck. I mean, guys on pit road running. and um, He got some criticism on Twitter, and I really don't know what happened, and I'd hate to judge, but one thing that we know for sure is none of the wheels on that truck locked up, if at mm-hmm. all. It, it, it just kept rolling, yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's a bunch of different ideas of what happened. Jesse is the only one who really knows. Um, I think he said in the interview that he was trying to let it roll and turn right. And it was just too far gone at that point. I mean, and Mm -hmm. I don't know what his spotter was saying. If he had one in the stands for qualifying, I was on the radio or not. But, yeah, it's it's, got to lock it down at that point. Mm -hmm. I mean, but it's it's really unfortunate for him because that truck was so gone so early in the corner. Like, either way, he'd never had a chance. And that's what kind of stinks when you're in that situation. I mean, they – it just was too slick for him. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he was so low on the racetrack when he started losing it, like wasn't even in the groove. And it's probably not his fault. He's probably listening to what other guys are doing that are just in different equipment, and, and he just couldn't do the same thing. That's kind of like me at Pocono last year. I mean, you can't – don't get advice from a guy who's running fifth. Yeah. If your truck is just trying to run 20th. Yeah, and he doesn't run many races at all. No. I mean, he's, he's, that's probably the first time I've actually seen him. Probably, the, yeah, I wonder if it, it might have been his first time on a mile and a half. I think so. Um, a lot of people thought the throttle hung. I don't think so. You would, you could have even heard that on TV. It got good enough sound. You can hear that thing wide open. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and who knows what brakes they might have had on the car. I don't know if they'd have. I don't know. I mean, the super speedway brakes are real small. Not that anybody would put that on an intermediate car mm-hmm. truck, but you just don't know. Because um, it can be harder to get them things locked up than in, s- in certain equipment that may some may think. Um, but yeah, that was uh, – that's – remind us safer barriers. That's what concrete looks like. That's Yeah, that, that was no, no safer barrier when you hit the yeah. in- inside wall there, the pit wall. Yeah. I'm sure there will be a rule change as far as setting the trucks out on pit road like they did. Um, I was I'm always surprised. I'm, uh, every time we go to a track, how how low the the pit wall? Pit yeah, pit wall is actually very low. Oh yeah, it's lower than you think it is. Mm-hmm. You think it'd be bigger, but then again, your gas man wouldn't be able to get over it, probably. You know. Yeah. But um, yeah. So there's not a lot there when they hit. No, uh, uh-uh. and uh, I was about ready to crank the motor. Like I saw him <laughs> getting out of the way. Yeah, and I couldn't, I couldn't tell how fast he was coming. Like, I saw him on the banking behind behind the whole line of trucks. And I remember I'm on the outside. Um, since I was already out, mm-hmm. the whole field is lined up on the inside of pit road, so I'm the only one on the outside. So I don't have anything behind me, so I can see the whole thing, you know, through that 20-inch mirror. And uh, see him get sideways off the banking. I hear it. I see him go towards the inside wall. Then I kind of lose him because it's too far to the left. Mm-hmm. But I have no idea how fast he's coming. If, is he just gonna? Is he gonna go back to the infield, or is he gonna keep spinning down pit road? Like take you out in the process. Yeah, I had to clutch in and the ignition on, like ready to hit, hit the starter and roll, and save that truck. Cause that could, I mean, that would have been so bad. So, um, so yeah, so eventful there. So was able to just go out after that, and um, definitely nervous with everybody saying how slick it was and. Um, all the adjustment. I think we ended up putting eight rounds in <laughs> at that point. And um, 
But you put down a good lap. I mean, it was oh yeah, solid, solid lap. It was right there with John, John, uh, yeah, John Hunter. Joe kind of told me right before that he said, "Look, just don't lift." He said, "I don't care, just don't lift." I said, "Hell, he's telling me, trust I'm, the truck. Just gotta trust it." So, um, I made a. I'm glad I got to go out that first time because I learned and I made a way better start out of the box for round two and used way more racetrack in one and two. Mm -hmm. So I had way more speed going in three and four. John Hunter told me to go up top. So I was running like a lane off the wall. That was sketchy because it was the first time I did that all weekend. Um, but it had plenty of grip. Like it barely using a wheel at all in three mm -hmm. and four. Um, had a really good run going down out of four and going into turn one and like i said wasn't worried about turn one um nobody seemed to be it was in the shade just didn't seem slick and uh i could tell by the rpms we were hitting going into one that we had been higher than we were all day obviously and so then you kind of really realize mm -hmm. you know this is this is going to be a good lap um and so but once it handled the bumps in one and two and i mean it did it effortlessly i was like oh we'll be good you know, we'll be good for three and four. And uh, didn't lift over there either. So literally from the time I got to second gear off of pit road till the checker um, didn't lift, just like Joe said, and ended up right behind John. I think he ran a .52. We ran a .57. So I was, mm -hmm. like, real happy with that. I mean, to go from qualifying 22nd at Pocono to 12th there, I was like – and I had been to Pocono before, so that was cool. Um Onto the race, yeah, it just, uh, <laughs> the, the, I understand why the cup guys don't like the package. Um, I mean, sure, on a mile and a half, it makes it better for the fans, because you see the five yeah. wide and the four wide. I mean, we were four wide, like, I think we were s bottom, bottom two. So we were, like, one bottom, two top, mm -hmm. like, three times, always in one and two. Like, I mean, it was just wild. It's First time I'd ever been four wide in my life. Um, so restarts were just crazy, and um, it was pretty good there in the beginning. I mean, there were some guys that were real aggressive and kind of just letting them go. Um, and a lot of them, a lot of them, we did get by like by like the first twenty laps. Like they just dive too hard into three and lose the nose, and then I started doing that, and so you all kind of learned the hard way. Yeah. Unless you're the top eight. Those guys seem to have done it before. <laughs> um, but uh, John Hunter didn't make it on the track. He had ignition problems. I know. How, how, because I'm sure the plan was for you to follow him. Yes, exactly. And then, uh, so obviously you couldn't do that because he had a fuel pump issue. Yep. Which you, we knew something about. Yeah. Yeah, we've had that before. It's about time. <coughs> I forget what we named our fuel pump. I forget. We had a name for him after we blew and screwed us at Martinsville. Maybe they did the same thing. Mm -hmm. Either way, we know that feeling. So um, it it's hasn't strayed too far away from us, I guess, still here later in the year. But, um, oh, yeah, so no, uh, pretty uneventful. I mean, there were no wrecks the whole night. No, no, was no. there was, um, I think, more engine failures yeah. than I've seen ever Yeah, like in a, in a truck race or a modern any modern race in yeah. the past couple of years, the, the engines are pretty indestructible, but it's have a lot of there's a lot of issues. There yeah, there, I think it was at least four. It might have been five, mm -hmm. and that was the first caution. I think like between lap between thirty and forty laps in, uh, Grand Enfinger blew up, so that's the end of his year pretty much for the playoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, really stunk for him. Won there last year, and um, I remember that. That was. Uh, that was also my first time being behind an engine failure like that. You get behind engine failures, but you never get behind the ones that grenade and just smoke trails everywhere. And yeah, and, and there's fire. Yeah, Days of Thunder kicks in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Help me, Tom Cruise. Yeah. Help me, Upper <laughs> Yeah. I mean, and uh, regroup there. Did pretty good on that restart. I mean, so we weren't losing them early on. We were doing pretty well there. Um, truck felt real good. Just uh, – I was probably playing defense too much. Um, I know I threw a couple blocks that probably didn't please too many guys, but I could not. I just couldn't get runs. Like I, I, I could. I guess I should say I couldn't use them. I'd get runs, and the outside was just not there for us. So mm -hmm. I go in right under somebody, 
try to get my left headlight out and clean air a little bit and it would just go straight and that is so frustrating um and uh so yeah and then a little bit later then johnny Sauter and matt crafton blow up mm -hmm. simultaneously yeah all the thor motorsports trucks yeah. blew up yeah, the rear main seals or something yeah that was crazy i was like when i passed them i thought they had both hit the wall or something yeah. By the time I got there, I was like, I thought maybe, um, maybe Sauter had like kind of got right reared by Crafton. They came up into mm -hmm. him and they both got into the wall or something. Then I drove by and saw their right sides were clear, clean. So I was like, man, what the, what the heck is? And there was a ton of speedy dry down, wasn't there? Yeah. Then I, then I learned. I was <laughs> like, oh boy. Um, and um, so actually, Omar, ironically today, um. Here we are two weeks later, put out a statement today explaining everything that happened and uh, not to be critical, but it doesn't seem like much of an explanation to me. They said it was the the high intense circumstances of that race and the temperature. Now, I understand the temperature, but every mm -hmm. race is high intensity. I mean, you're every race is high intensity. Yeah, I don't I mean. Maybe I'm ignorant here, but I don't understand where those, how those motors aren't working, you know, harder there than they are any other racetrack, especially places like Daytona and Talladega when yeah. you're constantly, you're at high you know, RPM, uh, yeah. sustained high RPM, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I just, um, so I, I don't know. Maybe um, they do so much electronically with the tuning um, of those engines. I mean, they come in and. They can hook up a computer every single time you come in from practice. And they do, like, have settings from track to track. So it's nice how they can how they can control things. But at the same time, I, it said that they also requested all 32 engines from that race. Really? Yeah. So I kind of have a doubt that everybody um, – I think they had a, an issue that they yeah. didn't want to say. Yeah. It's interesting. And it's not like everybody took <coughs> engines just to that race. So a lot of guys think it's just the electronic dialing that they do for that weekend. They need to change that. Whether it's leaning it out, not, you know, mm -hmm. detuning the engine just a little bit. Um, but I know Joe ran at Omar at other racetracks. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's, it's weird. But so um, that was definitely a highlight of the night. And um, so later in the race, uh, I... I got my butt kicked on a couple of restarts. I gotta say, um, just spin the tires, or well, not really. Like I had enough grip to not spin the tires, but okay. I would like back off like a foot, like fairly, you know, because NASCAR is watching everybody, so you can't like back way up and get a run. And the guy behind you is just gonna tear your rear end off anyhow if you try it. Mm -hmm. um, but like, and again, this is just experience i guess stock car wise i mean dirt's a little bit different on restarts because you're all kind of already like slowly spinning your tires mm -hmm. so good restart on the dirt is the guy who doesn't spin their tires as much it does not you know it's not like nascar where some tracks it's you spin your tires some tracks that payments do enough where you don't mm -hmm. um old tires versus new tires on restarts um but i would just try to anticipate the leader in the box and then they'd start going and then they'd check up and then i mean i just about would pile drive the guy in front of me um and then i'd be killed and you know as always that's when they go <laughs> as soon as you get on the brakes that's when they go so common stuff no excuses i mean that's just my inexperience um on that end and uh but man i couldn't learn from it i would do it once and i'd do it at least one more time after that it's so frustrating, and then I get, like, even if, like, you have to be on point at this level on your restarts. I mean, mm -hmm. if you lose six feet to that guy in front of you, you can bet there's somebody making that three wide on the inside of you right now. I mean, mm -hmm. the second that it happens, the second you realize you have a bad restart, there's somebody inside. Um, and so that's, that's frustrating because we get caught three wide or something, and we might not even lose that spot. I mean, we might get it back with the momentum on the high side, but – you know, all three of you kind of paid a price then because the leaders are just going. You know, you're three wide, you're lifting now, and, and they're not. And so uh, just getting caught back in traffic. And then uh, 
finally, we lost some spots there, so now we're running like 15th and getting frustrated because we really should be closer to 10th or so. And um, end of stage two comes along, so now everybody comes down pit road and um, getting their last set of tires and fueling up for the uh, the finish. And so our guys weren't entirely sure if everybody could make it on fuel. Okay. Um, so we did a bit of a gamble, very similar to what we did at Richmond the year before. Um, and I appreciate that the guys had enough faith in me to want to do this. I mean, they kind of had the attitude, look, for the 87 team, we're doing pretty good in the top 15. John Hunter didn't get to come out. None of us are running for points, so let's just go for it all. So I, I was humbled by that. But um, decided to just take fuel and not take our last set of tires. So basically, um, sorry, I'm yawning here. Basically, we went, we came down pit road with one to go on the caution. So we got one or two more laps in the leaders. So we should be, if they run out, at least we know we're two laps better. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we were praying for a caution within those last 60, 65 laps. Um, like with 30, 35 to go would have been perfect because our truck didn't like it, didn't seem to come into like lap nine or so. Um, so, of course, like Richmond, caution didn't happen. So now like we're in, I think we started that last stage in like 22nd or 23rd and we had gotten up to 16th and I'm kind of getting frustrated. I had actually forgot the strategy that we were hoping for a caution. Like, I just was thinking, go, 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 go. Mm-hmm. The last lap could happen any time. You know, just go. Um, and so I was getting pretty frustrated, and I wasn't showing it on the radio as bad as I did at radio, at Texas. Um, but I did get really frustrated, um, I think, after I got around Gus Dean and um, was trying to catch down Jordan and would get close to him, lose a nose, lose three car lengths, get close again, lose it. And so – just kept on gaining and losing. Um, and then I forget uh, Camden Camden Murphy, who drives for Joe every now and then and does some Xfinity stuff and even some monster truck stuff, actually, was, was spotting for me and told me that uh, we still had, like, 22 lap older tires and everybody. Mm-hmm. And that caught me down. I completely forgot about that. So it's like, okay, pace yourself here. You're passing guys with fresher tires on you, like a lot of guys. <laughs> I mean, we got, you know – Mm-hmm. We ended up getting a Jordan, which was a blast. I love racing him. I mean, it's so funny. Like, we had – didn't really race each other too much at Pocono, but it comes down to 15 laps, here we are. Didn't really race each other too much at Las Vegas, down the last 15 laps, here we go again. Like, it's mm-hmm. – and um, he's just uh, – he's always been motivating to me with the way he does things, um, kind of all by himself. And – um so, let's see, Pocono, I kind of, I got by him, but he had a really good run on the last lap coming out of the tunnel turn, and I just went straight to the bottom the whole way down the back <laughs> stretch, wouldn't let him have it, kind of a cheap move, and he, he just got right up to my bumper in turn three, totally could have moved me. I mean, nicest guy ever. And by the way, we're battling for his best career finish. His best yeah. career finish was 13th. So... He tied it that day, but had he moved me, he'd have, he'd have beat it. Um, and I knew that, so <laughs> I, I appreciated that. And um, and at the race at Vegas, again, we didn't really race each other too hard early on, but there was a restart where I didn't even know he was inside of me, and I did run him just about on the apron going into three. Um, and then I slid up as soon as I knew he was down there and pretty much gave him the spot. Mm-hmm. And um, so then – He's running the outside, which was really cool because he taught me. I didn't even think we could run out there yet. And, uh, I thought, hell, I thought I'm tight on the bottom. It's not going to work up there. Um, and so I couldn't even try it, of course, because as you're behind him, you can't run his lane or you're really not turning. So I keep Kyle Larsoning it down on the bottom, like trying to do slide jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, couldn't clear him. Like, it would get right up. He'd have my right rear going down the back and would beat me and, Lose him again. And then next lap, here I go. Like, he he knew it was coming every lap, I could tell. Um, and I will say that's fun about mile-and-a-half racing is there's not too many tracks where you can really slow, you know, throw drive or side jobs on pavement. 
Yeah. You you need those kind of multi groove racetracks. And um so yeah, so he kept uh he, I felt like he was almost lifting on the high side to get that run off the corner. Like he was letting me drive in like a knucklehead on the bottom. Mm-hmm. And then um I finally just didn't lift one time at that point I had like 46 laps on the tires. So not the brightest thing usually. And just I knew I was going to wash up in front of him and it just worked perfectly. That like I dove in and just cleared him um, right on the outside, about middle of the one and two. Wish TV got that. And um, like normally he would have had to lift because he would have had to run. But when I took that arrow hit off his nose, I mean he kind of just went straight a bit and got out of the groove. So then he was in the marbles and and then I had the preferred groove. And as soon as we went to the next corner, I went straight up top. So I'm sure that was like you know pissed pissed to him a little bit. <laughs> Now he's got to go to the bottom, um, but I loved it up there. As soon as I went up there and had clean air, it was oh, it was great. Um, and uh, so we talked, and so because I, I did actually apologize, I thought he'd be upset with uh, some of the moves I made. Um, again, here we are racing for that best career finish uh, for both of us, mm-hmm. and um, so that's pretty much how it ended. I mean, we were starting to catch Anthony Alfredo. We were in thirteenth, and just didn't get that caution. So. Um, Everybody with with Joe and the re- all the Nemco guys were real happy. I mean, we were a little disappointed because we had better outright speed. But hey, just another day that we brought everything home in one piece. They, you know, have some bad luck with that lately. Um, after Pocono, they had a wreck at Eldora. Uh, Joe sadly got tangled up at at Michigan, and then John Hunter wrecked at Bristol, and um, and then we were, you know, we came back, and and obviously John Hunter had his problems, so. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was but they weekend. didn't have to fix any sheet metal. Exactly. They they all I was pretty beat myself up after that. I was pretty upset. But they are all they were all very appreciative of that. <laughs> um so yeah, so that's that weekend. Back to uh this past weekend. NASCAR went to Richmond. Mm-hmm. Um what do you think about that race? I I know we both I don't think got to catch very much of it. Yeah, unfortunately I didn't get to catch much of it at all. Um I, I, I said this before. Ryan Newman's going to race his way into the next round. I bet <laughs> that is on the record. It we know. Yep, you have said that. Where did Roush co- Fenway come from? All of a I sudden, know. where they have, uh, you know, speed in the car. He, I, I gotta say it. I mean, I, there are some days where I am really not a Ryan Newman fan. But geez, he just. I mean, he's always done that. He has always mm-hmm. taken out of the, out of the camp he's in. When it comes down to later in the year. Like Rocket Man just turned something on. It's mm-hmm. not. It's not going out and winning races. It's not just dominating. But he takes a weekend where he is normally thirteenth the whole weekend, and suddenly he's seventh. Mm-hmm. And it's like he did that at at RCR. You know those days after Kevin Harvick wasn't mm-hmm. there, like twenty fourteen in that. Um, I guess back then it was just a three and the twenty seven that he had his teammates, but made the made the whole way to the last round twenty fourteen. Mm-hmm. You know, had a chance at the championship. I mean, without a win, like goes the whole way through the playoffs without a win. I mean, it's won't that bring down the house if he ends up oh, oh, oh. winning a championship without a win? That's a. Ama- I mean, yeah. I mean, it, people would go nuts. Yeah, but. it's like yeah. I mean, it's impressive. <laughs> it's it's impressive. That's for sure. And uh, I mean, he just can find find things. I mean, it's amazing. And um, so yeah, I mean, pretty uneventful weekend. I felt like. You know, Martin Trex had another great weekend. I mean, Joe Gibbs overall, man, they just dominate that place. Yeah. All four cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they just – I think uh, Eric Jones did get, did get disqualified. He was uh, fifth. So, I think Newman ended up getting fifth because he was sixth. Because he finished the race <laughs> since yeah. six years. Yeah. So. I mean, he got a top five. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> That's amazing. And uh, I think they had too much rear toe in the 20 car, so – um. Other, I mean, they would have had all four cars, I think, in the top seven, if that mm-hmm. top seven or top eight. Um, Kyle Busch, not too happy again. Not as bad as usual. You know, not as upset. I, I think uh, I think the uh, coach had a little couple words with yeah. him after the last meltdown he oh, had. Oh, yeah. He hates losing the teammates, <laughs> man, and that's two weeks in a row. <laughs> yeah. I mean, oof, I just – it's amazing to think where Martin Truex came from. Um so it's cool to see them guys doing well. 
But, uh, yeah, I mean, really not too many cautions. Alex Bowman mm -hmm. brought out the Silver Spoon card on Austin Dillon. They weren't too happy with each other. And um, other than that, nothing led to led to some big news this week. Speaking of Roush Fenway, um, as good as Newman's doing, a year after Trevor Bain was let go from that place, now Ricky Stenhouse is being let go. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, let me ask you this. Did you see that coming? I, I think I saw the writing on the wall. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think he's been happy for a while. Yeah. It doesn't seem like. Because Roush just struggled, obviously, with getting getting fast cars and things. Yeah. And um, and maybe, maybe they're starting to give him good pieces. He's still not finishing mm -hmm. well. I don't know. I mean, obviously, Ryan Newman is finishing probably above where the car should be. Yeah. So, and and he's he's back to his old ways of wrecking cars. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's. It is such a crazy dynamic over there. And what's sad about it is you really, there's too many variables to tell. And it was the same way with Trevor Bain. Like, the package has changed so much in mm -hmm. the Cup Series that the second they get a rhythm of something, something changes. And sometimes it's like, okay, well, this was good, this wasn't. You know, um, before the new package, restrictor plate races these last couple of years, I mean, mm -hmm. kicking. But... But what's funny is even back then, Stenhouse was the one kicking butt on those plate tracks. Really, Bain wasn't there. Mm -hmm. um, and we know Bain's not too bad of a plate racer at all, Daytona 500. A little different kind of plate racing back then. But um, then Matt Kenseth comes in. They start putting Matt Kenseth in the seat. He had a couple of good runs. Yeah, but, but he, he, did, he didn't do spectacular. I think no. everybody was expecting him to get in that car and you – know, be a contender, but yeah. that, that that didn't happen. No, uh uh. Um and again, Matt Kenseth had never driven that package before. I know. So it's like mm -hmm. they made a big deal that night, uh, last year at the All Star race when they put Matt Kenseth in for the first time. That was the first debut of this kind of sorta package. Huge spoiler, huge mm -hmm. splitter and all that good stuff and um you know, but again it was kind of the package. I mean we saw a lot of teams last year in the All Star race like, you know, Bubba Wallace, A. J. Allmendinger do really well because everybody's holding it wide open pretty much. I mean, <laughs> they put a truck series package in it mm -hmm. basically. And um, so, yeah, so I think uh, it really st stunk to see Trevor Bain um, get let go last year. I mean, he has not had a, a good couple of years before that. So a lot of people would think that it's just, but, I mean, and I don't know how he was personally on on that level, uh, what they felt like his drive was, how hard he was working off the racetrack. But mm -hmm. I feel like anybody who makes it to that level usually doesn't lose it. I mean. But it is a business. It's a business. Oh, yeah. Like any other business, it's a business. Exactly. And if you don't perform, yeah. whether you're a CEO of a company or mm -hmm. whatever, you're going to get voted out by the board. Or, yeah. You know. It's a good point. That's a, and that's, <coughs> that's what's crazy is, is mm -hmm. how – you just kind of wonder, was it the driver or was it the team? And you look at Matt Kenseth in the car and you say, well, it doesn't look like it's a driver. And then you see Ryan Newman in the car this year and you're like, yeah, it was. You know, he's taking it to town. Night and day. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. But now Stenhouse is struggling. I mean, and it's so ironic because they both came in together. I mean, they literally, they're that back when it was a nationwide series, had a whole campaign called Ricky versus Trevor. And it was when Ricky and Trevor were splitting the six ride in the ex mm -hmm. Nationwide Series. Um, always a white car. It was like a Roush development deal. Like there was no really sponsorship yeah. there. Um, you know, so it was almost like <laughs> it was almost like them bidding out who's going to get the cup ride. Eventually, they both did. Obviously, that that works with money. It's not a you know we know exactly. it wasn't about yeah we, we yeah. It's not about how they actually performed. Who's going to put the sponsorship to? Who's going to put the pieces together to get yeah. it? Yeah. Um, but they were getting the seat time, I guess. <laughs> we can give them that. Um, and then here within a year of each other, both gone. Like I mean, so it's interesting. And, and Trevor didn't get another ride. So it's going to be interesting to see if Stenhouse does. Um, you know, what's what's interesting is, is how um, – Roush was able to get the other half of the news is to get Chris Busher, their 2015 Xfinity champ, um, back over from JTG over to Roush. Mm -hmm. So Chris Busher will be taking over the 17. Um, 
that almost looks like it was a performance-based decision. Um, I, I'm assuming Fast and All is going to stay there at the 17 camp, and Chris Buescher has been doing really good in that 37. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, and he went straight from the, the championship car with, with Roush to that ride. Um, I think he might have done some things with front row. But, I mean, it has always been competitive and kind of some non-competitive stuff, and so it's good to see him getting that ride. But, yeah, it's definitely interesting to, to wonder what guys like Stenhouse and, and I guess Busher is going to answer that for us. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. If I mean, he, yeah. we'll, we'll probably know within the next week or so. Yeah, we'll I mean, know it's gonna if whether some chips are going to fall. And there's going to be some more chips falling, too, I bet. Oh, yeah. If, if Busher sets the world on fire over there, I guess that we can say that maybe it was it was the guy behind the wheel. But I just I can't imagine it. I just mm -hmm. so young like that. It's not like you lose something, you know, skill wise mm -hmm. to come from dirt. And um, there's no doubt that Stenhouse and Bain had talent. So it could be it could be a business level. It could be a sponsorship thing. Um, could be. Uh, you know, personal level. I mean, at the end of the day, some teams like to see guys that are just more driven. You know, doesn't mean they can drive better than anybody else, but you got guys mm -hmm. like Chris Buescher and um, Ryan Priest who will grind it out and constantly working out. Mm -hmm. It might not have any effect on how they perform that weekend. Probably won't. Um, but they're doing it just for that day that they might need it. You know, mm -hmm. um, because let's face it, like as a driver, if your stuff is slower than the next guy in this day and age, you might be able to get by him, but you're not going to pass three guys, four guys that are legitimately in faster equipment than you without strategy. Like you're not yeah. just going to outdrive them, um, especially with this package. <laughs> so many people, like it's so hard to, in the Cup Series, maybe in other series, but in the Cup Series to take something that was an 18th place car and put it in 12th by sheer driving. No strategy, no wrecks. Um, that's rare. So how can you get mad at some guys unless somebody gets in their seat and actually does it? <laughs> mm -hmm, exactly. Once, if it happens, then yeah. Yeah. Like you said, it's it's, it's a high level. It's, it's and again, business. Yeah. I mean, we're talking tenths of a second here. <laughs> Got to win stuff. Exactly. Got to keep sponsors on the cars. Yeah. So I'm... I'm excited to see how it goes, and uh, um, there's rumors they didn't re-sign Ryan Priest yet in the 47, which is mm -hmm. the same team there, JTG, but um, I have a feeling they will. I mean, that guy is just driven as well, and uh, I'm sure they're just ironing out the sponsorship mm -hmm. stuff, and um, I don't know what the, I mean, if they have the deal set up for the 37, and he's out, I feel like they'll have it for the 47, worst case. I I have a I would doubt that they'd actually find a driver for the 37, and and not take that sponsorship over over to the 47 if they don't have anything. Yeah, exactly. And 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 can Priest like that? I mean, they I think everybody likes Ryan Priest, except for maybe Elliot Sadler. But um, <laughs> you remember that championship race in With Sadler in Xfinity? Yeah. Yeah. He still hasn't gotten over that. He brought that up the other week or on Twitter. <laughs> uh. When they were racing for the championship with Byron and Priest was with Gibbs at the time and kind of got in the way. But, um, so yeah, so that's all, all the news there, I think, this week. Um, in uh, Silly Season. Yeah, I don't think there's much else. Uh, like I said, Silly Season's just ramping up. So. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, so now we got Daniel Hemrick sitting. We got Ricky Stenhouse sitting. Um, do they pick up those guys or do they look to lower levels? Got guys like Ross Chastain and, and mm -hmm. Brett Moffitt. Um, Brett Moffitt's doing great in the truck series. He's driven cup races, plenty of them, a lot more than people remember when he raced with Michael Waltrip. Pretty sure he's got okay. he's got at least two dozen starts. Yeah, I, I I don't even remember that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's he's done it all already. <coughs> and um, but yeah, so that's this week news. Other than that, here we go. We're going to the Roval. This week. The Roval. Oh, I remember this race. I remember this is like a special holiday to me, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I remember where I was, um, <laughs> who I was with, what we were doing last year. It's with you guys um, down the road here. Mm -hmm. And um, I was screaming in my chair at the end of that thing <laughs> when uh, pulling for Jimmy Johnson. 
I was like, this is it. This is, this is, he's going to break the dry spell. Um, and, um, just gets loose and then just gets, just will hops. Yeah. True X. Oh man. It's just, I, what I enjoy about races like that mostly is because when you throw a curveball at the entire field mm-hmm. and say, nobody's got a notebook, not crew chiefs, not drivers, you got to drive this place. Cause it's, it's, you know, it's going to be rare if your crew chief can figure out your car better than the next guy in 500 mm-hmm. miles in one weekend. Maybe this weekend there might be some consistent favorites. Maybe not. It might take till next year or the year after that. But when you finally take the teams to a place they've never been before and they're all guessing for a while, it's usually going to bring out either the best guest or <laughs> the best driver who's just freaking wheeling it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's shut up a lot of Jimmy Johnson haters for a little bit, even though it didn't end well. Because um, here we are, all they do is talk him down. Here we are at a race that's going to kind of even out the drivers. Mm-hmm. And right away, he steps to the front. I mean, if he would have won that, that would have been perfect. Um, and let's face it, those last 10 laps, he was the fastest guy on a racetrack. Mm-hmm. I mean, running down Truex, I mean, whooped butt in a chicane on that last lap. I'm sure mm-hmm. Truex was just trying to be conservative. But Truex is a good road racer. I mean, extremely good. And uh, not that that's his background or anything, but he's always been at the front of those road races. And here comes Jimmy Johnson, you know, and uh, dive bombs it in there, wheel hops, uh, spins <laughs> out. At that point, you don't know where you are. Backs right in a Truex. Yeah. He <laughs> uh, was on his way to win that race. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, at the end of the day, Ryan Blaney wins a race, third place guy. I mean, I can't imagine. I, it was just... Everybody was going crazy. Mm-hmm. That that was a great idea, great turnout for NASCAR. I mean, really good good decision. But at the end of the day, it knocked Jimmy Johnson out of the playoffs, and it hurt Martin Truex. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the Robo. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. I, I like watching the Robo. I think it's just it's just it's a fun race to watch. You know yes. what I mean? Yeah. And like you said, because there's no no there's no notebooks. Anybody anybody could win it. You know? Exactly. Um. I. I think what we disagree is I don't think it should be in the chase. Yeah. That's the next question. Exactly. <laughs> That's. And I think you put a uh, Facebook poll out there. I did. I did. Uh, so we'll so go and check that. So everybody who's listening, make your decision now. Do you think the Roval should be in the chase or the playoffs? Whatever they want to call it. I'm calling it chase. Um, and you're a yay person. So bring <laughs> on your yay. Yes. I am the yay. So <coughs> kind of. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm at a point where I would rather be throwing um, curves into the NASCAR season, into the year, like this, rather than point systems and different size spoilers. That's that's the reason why I'm a yay. I would rather, okay, here's an idea. Let's, let's have a different track nobody's been to. No crew chiefs have any notebooks on it. No, I mean... You're gonna. You have one weekend to get this place right, and uh, and and guess what? Everybody else is working their damnness too, too. So like everybody's scrambling. It's gonna create a good race. I mean, it's, and just like last year, it created a good <coughs> practice. I mean, I remember we were watching practice last year, and that six guys wrecked. Yeah. I mean, the whole weekend is awesome, and yeah, it might run its course in eight years, ten years, but. It's better than changing a spoiler every other year, I mean, or hell, every mm-hmm. other week. So that's the, that's the reason why I have it a yay. Is it a good thing to have the Roval in our format, in our points format? Maybe not. Let alone, I will say, for it to be a cutoff race, that's one thing if it's a playoff race, but to be a cutoff race, whew, I mean, you got a guy who could be easily safe in seventh place in the pay- playoffs. Exactly. And then he's done. So, that's a little aggravating, and that happened last year to a few guys. Um, but the second, I the, another reason why I say yay, is because I think that that's just as you know, no worse than Talladega being in the chase. Um, I mean, in in reality, um, they say there's you know Talladega, Martinsville, or um. um Wild cards, 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, in reality, every race is a wild card. True. You don't know. You don't know who, 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 any given Sunday, right? Yeah. You don't know who's going to win. You don't know who's going to you know, oh, blow yeah. a tire in the last lap, yeah. whatever. But the reason I'm just I, I'm nay, and I think you actually said it because it, it's a cutoff race. Yeah. And I think it go, it pushes wild card to the nth. Yeah. You know, it's just too much of a wild card. Mm-hmm. There's too many other tracks we could be going to and, and running that that, that that would be uh, just as exciting, I think. Yeah. If you want a road course, um, run a real road course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I'd be good with that. That's the thing. I kind of – I do felt feel like it was unfair to the places like Sonoma and Watkins Glen mm-hmm. who have been on the circuit for so many years. Mm-hmm. And, you know, four years ago when the big poll was should we have a road course in the playoffs – a lot of guys say yes, and he- here's you know here we are. Well, our road courses didn't even get it. <laughs> yeah, and, and essentially it gives Charlotte what almost five races. Um, four, four, five, like four at least. I mean, you got the all, you got the uh, the six hundred. Oh, you're right. It's three, three technically. But you got the right. all star race there, yeah. and then the Roval, and the Roval, and then you have the um, what was it the? There's another race there too on the on the regular. Track and or did, or did he take that one away for the Roval? I think they took that away. Okay. Yeah. So it gives them three races. Which, you're right. That's a lot. And I, I would, uh, like, I'm glad <laughs> they run it at the Roval instead of the mile and a half, because three races at one mile and a half exactly is enough. But you're yeah. right. Maybe if it was flipped to where the Roval was in the spring, and the mile and a half, you know, the the oval mm-hmm. was in the the playoffs, sp- Chase. You're right. That that would be a good idea. That's the thing. I mean, and again, living in the past here, if we didn't have a version of knockout playoffs, mm-hmm. this would be pretty darn good. But yeah, there there's too many things now that can take a guy who's had a great 30 races this exactly. year out into the dumps. And so once I kind of, if I get mad at the Roval for that, I get mad at the format. The, the the chase format and the the package. Um, I get mad mm-hmm. at all three things because I feel like okay, well, the package, whether you like it or not, it's throwing everybody off. You can't have a you know the only guy, whoever was good at dealing with different packages and different points fa- formats was Jimmy Johnson. Mm-hmm. So he's not doing well. Period. So I just don't. You know, I mean, I'll give it to Gibbs. I mean, yeah, those guys are consistent every year, but it's just it's it's very little consistency. Everything's kind of an experiment, so that's tiring. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, again, that's not even bringing up again Talladega being later. I'm not a huge restrictor plate fan. Like that's back when we had no chase and mm-hmm. the same package all year, just about. Then Talladega's okay. Because then we have, okay, we got four restrictor plate races. Mm-hmm. Those are wild cards. Those could, you know, screw up the season a little bit. That's okay. But now we have knockout playoffs. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the Roval. Different packages. I mean, so, yeah, it's just a lot of things. Oh, yeah, and at the end of the day, we're <laughs> still not counting the fact that on the last lap of any race, if you're leading, you could be taken out. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, there's another wild card. Denny Hamlin could take you out of Martinsville like you did Chase. Joey Logano could take out Matt Kenseth like he did at Kansas. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a mile and a half race that screwed up the entire season. Mm-hmm. It's Kansas, you know. So, yeah. So, is the Roval needed? I am iffy there. I'll vote yay because I'm all up. If we're just going to have fun and screw <laughs> things up all year, then whatever. Let's do it the whole way. <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah. so. But, yeah. Um I think that the Roval is not needed as much as, as – just like some other things probably mm-hmm. aren't. Um, and uh, let, let's let's check our Facebook did you poll. Did somebody burn out outside? Is that what I happened? did, yeah. Somebody did do a <laughs> solid burnout outside. Um, okay, so checking out the vote here. Ooh. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so – it's looking about at like a 72% yes. Oh, yeah, so okay. I will I will assess. So there's a lot of guys who feel like it's a yes. Well, uh, we'll give them that until their until their driver spins out in the last lap exactly. and bounces exactly. off a wall. Yep. Gets taken or get, out. Or gets taken out by a lap car or something and Yep. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah. 
Ooh, I'm 78. percent um, It's not done yet. It's not done yet. We'll we'll keep going. It's it's been on here. Uh, it's been 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 about an hour yet. Um, but only like 60. So, um, so that's interesting. I'd like to hear the people's take on that. Yeah, I'll, um, be, I'll be looking that up tonight. Yeah, on a yeah. weekly basis. If you don't watch the whole season, I think a lot of people are excited this week. Yeah, because it's not well, a regular don't race. Get, like I said. Don't get me wrong. I like I like watching the Roble, mm-hmm. but I just don't think the place for it is a knockout race and in, in the it's, it, 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 it's such high stakes. Yeah, I, if I was a team or a sponsor with that yeah. much into it, I'd be pretty upset. Yeah, just like I would be at a restrictor plate race. So, um. No, but it'll be fun. I mean, it'll be fun to watch either way, guaranteed. It always is. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So um, I hope that we can see more changes like that. Now everybody's jumping on the bandwagon. Well, this is what the Rover would look like at Las Vegas and Texas. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's how you ruin exactly. it. Exactly. But some days I would ra- I would rather see more road course races than mile and a half. I do agree on that. So in the Daytona Rolex yeah. Daytona. Um, it's already established. Yeah, Ro- I'd like to see Road America on the Cup schedule. Um, yeah, so so would I. Um, maybe not Mid Ohio. I don't know. Maybe Mid Ohio. Um, but yeah, definitely more road course races. Mm-hmm. Like, if we're gonna go to mile and a half twice, I I you know maybe not Sonoma based mm-hmm. off of it being on the West Coast, but two races at Watkins Glen, maybe would ruin it. But I mean, it's it can't be any worse than two mile and a half races. No, like it's no, just you're right. Let alone, like, honestly, now that you say that, the fact that we used to have three races at Charlotte, mm. that blows. I didn't even realize yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> – you two races at a mile <laughs> and a half is enough. It's the same – I am sorry, but it's it's just not enough changing. I would, again, back to the first statement, change the tire compounds and the tracks that we go to. Um don't don't change the time of day. They they did that at Richmond for a little bit. They went back to a day race. No, it's great as a night race. Now we got both races back at night. Um, mm-hmm. Don't you know move stuff around? You know from okay, it's gonna be a week later this year. That'll help things. No, like <laughs> you know what else we got is the the Grand Prix circuit in Texas. Oh, is that th- is that this weekend? No, but we have that. Then oh, you, the, the I, I don't know how, how how good a cup car would be on that course because uh, you know Grand Prix tracks are obviously pretty flat. Yeah, it's interesting. But you know they they make it they made Indy work. Yeah, you know that's the thing. I mean, so that'd be fun to see. I I think they have tested cup cars there. If I yeah, I think Kurt Busch did right. Yeah, yeah. I remember a couple of years ago that facility. <coughs> I have to look it back up. I had no idea how they pay that off. I, th- and I've heard that there's been struggles with it to mm-hmm. be paid off. I mean. It is an amazing facility, huge, state-of-the-art, and to really honestly only have one major event there. I know. I mean, oh, my God. I don't, I don't know what else they run there. They must run some other, maybe e, e, e cars or something yeah. like that, Formula E's or maybe, yeah, I don't Formula, know. But Formula E's, maybe some SCCA stuff. Not yeah. that that really pays much bills. You know, some of those lower series, the, the tracks get paid just of what they bring Mm-hmm. For entry fees, exactly. But at that point, your grandstands ain't even, you know. No. <laughs> um. So yeah, I mean, it's uh. Power to them. I'm glad. <laughs> glad they 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 built that. Got to go see that sometime. Um. But same thing, like in the truck series, like I, you know, dirt races are kind of a mm-hmm. toss up. So, but it's where we come from. I wouldn't mind seeing more dirt races. Um. Just things like that. I mean, I just putting a different spoiler on the thing this weekend. Why your crew chief spent all week on yeah. suspension, chassis, mm-hmm. body plate, and now we're gonna give them all this downforce, or we're gonna take it away. And um, now the fring, the freaking things are aero sensitive. So he spent all weekend at practice trying to do single car runs and just get the thing faster. And then you get behind somebody, it handles like crap, and it's like you know. 50 laps my way, man. That's not how Cole Trickle had to deal with that crap. (laughs) If we're going to go off the base of this podcast, (laughs) Days of Thunder, if Cole Trickle got behind Rowdy Burns and lost his freaking nose and couldn't Mm -hmm. turn, that movie wouldn't happen. (laughs) That's right. Everything in that movie would be gone if we had to deal with aero-sensitivity race cars. Get rid of the splitters. 
get rid of the side skirts, and we can go run 50 laps my way. Yeah, when Russ Wheeler can just put you right in the wall and, and, ru- and ride you on the wall. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Russ might not even be able to get to you now. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, because you, cause you, when you see Russ Wheeler now in your mirror, just, just wherever he's running, go there. <laughs> and then you know he won't be able to get to you. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, like, because he can't get that close. Nope. Too much, too arrow sensitive. So, um, I think that's a good way to to top it off, Brian. What do you Still think? That. Um, is there something else you wanted to talk about? Um, uh, been trying to think here. Oh yeah, I guess looking forward to our schedule, um, for the rest okay. of the year. Personally, um, I think there's a slight chance we could be competing at Martinsville again. Okay. Which would be great. We still have our equipment, mm-hmm. so. That's a chance. Um, I'm taking it with a grain of salt, but that would be amazing if we could try to make another attempt as we did earlier this year. Um, really just prove a lot. And, and uh, a lot of people here would be proud. There's so many people here that would work so hard to make that happen. So hopefully some funding comes in so we can buy some tires. And, of course, by the updates that NASCAR is probably going to make us do with our truck been sitting for six months. Exactly. That's that's honestly, for everybody who's listening, that's the biggest thing. If if the rule book was the same from at the beginning of the year, we'd be probably going to Martins. I mean, we'd definitely be going to Martinsville. Hell, we'd probably even go to Talladega. But there's so much that changes within these things. It's honestly not even the tire and fuel bill anymore at all. Day to day, week to week, it's just it's constant yeah. changes. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I, I, I watch you on your phone getting updates. Just constantly getting updates. Oh yeah, if you're not never ends. Yeah, it ha- it doesn't matter if you're running four times a year or thirty. You have to have somebody in the shop every single day, mm-hmm. which I tried. For the fans again listening, I don't get paid for doing that, so I I do have to eat somehow. <laughs> So I tried making it an evening job and, yeah. and still couldn't keep up. And, and mainly that's the logistical part of being in PA that, that hurt us there. Um, as we, we almost have the manpower. It's tough. It's tough with volunteers um, to, for all of us with everything going on to have time to go down there and update things every night. And, of course, no offense, you know, I understand why some people wouldn't necessarily want to help unless they knew we were going racing. I mean, if you're mm-hmm. down there every day really not knowing when you're going to go race again, but you're constantly updating stuff because again, mm-hmm. you have to. If you don't, if you're not down there every day, here we are, three weeks away from Martinsville. We're gonna find out here in a few days if we're gonna be able to, and we're yeah. gonna have to be down there two guys at least every night from now until Martinsville to maybe make it. I mean, a solid three weeks. Yes, in racing that includes weekends. I'm thinking you might get some help with that though, if, uh, from yeah. uh, Nemco. Yeah, that would be huge. But that's just what it takes. I mean, I wish it was, you know, Alan Kowicki being my hero a bit. I wish it was just build build your vehicle, and once you're building it for that year, man, you got the people behind you, you got the pit crew, and got enough to handle the tire bill and, and the motel room, go on the road and go racing. But exactly. it's just, uh, again, it's not, there's a th- it's not like that anymore. Um, you know, maybe – Back then, heck, if you're going into the next season, yeah, you might have to update again. But mm-hmm. honestly, if you sit out for six months in this day and age, you have a solid month of work um, to to get pre- back prepared and to make the race. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, again, you, the, the whole reason you're sitting for six months anyhow mm-hmm. is because you can't afford to pay both the tire bills and the people. That's right. So it's just – it's a constant, like – like ball that just keeps dropping like you can't keep anything going because the second that you make a race you're you're kind of broke again because you spent that whole month just buying and preparing updates mm-hmm. and then you have to go buy your tires your entry and your fuel and brutally honest the purse does not pay that at all it's not even not, close. not in trucks no nope no so now you lost money again mm-hmm. unless you have a decent amount of sponsorship so I thought I could do it cheaper myself. Um, I wasn't. I was right on some things as far as, you know, building things myself was mm-hmm. a little bit cheaper. But I guess quote unquote keeping them built is is yeah. right. I mean, my thing could go run at any racetrack. That truck could go run at any racetrack right now and be have competitive speed, but it won't go through tech. Mm-hmm. So that's that's where we're at. Um, sadly, it's it is a built race truck and it kills me every day. That's just sitting down there. Um, not getting track time, and uh, mm-hmm. 
but that's just a constant circle of life. So hopefully, uh, who knows with the resume that we have, if that'll ever if that'll ever change. But that's where I get my splitter and my spoiler issues. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Those are easy updates, but that's just the start of everything. Mm -hmm. It's so much deeper than that to stay updated for NASCAR that um, you just can't do it old school. Like late models, you know, there's like anything else on a local level, you know, and those things are expensive too. But, you know, you can you can build them and afford, if you can't afford mm -hmm. to run all year, easy fix. You sit out a little bit, you be patient, you get ready, and you go racing again as hard as ever the next time. Mm -hmm. But if there's just, it's a simple yes or no in NASCAR to where if you can't afford to run 30 races, you can't afford to run two. That's right. Um, so. I know what I wanted to ask you. Yes, sir. How's, how's the legend car coming? Oh, yeah. Um, it's coming along pretty good. The new okay. chassis is being built. Um, Adam Meyer is working really hard. Great guy. And um, I'm actually going to be going over there this weekend to check on some things and try to help out. Um, I believe he's actually going to be straightening straightening the flipped chassis. Oh, yeah. And I think he might try to climb in that. That's pretty cool. So I told him, let me climb in it. I said, I flipped it. <laughs> I said, you get That's in a right. new car. And he said, no, man, I want you in a new car. So – I think that's an ongoing discussion here because <laughs> I'm going to try to talk to him more. I, I'm confident enough um, we took a good look at that thing. And if I think – I still good. think that if I got the right springs and shocks on that thing, it will run. So um, that's cool. I think after the NASCAR season is over here, we're actually going to be grouping up with another group of guys and actually building a third. That's cool. Um, so we'll have some uh, stuff to do next year. It's going to be fun. Also, going back to my very first, my home track, uh, Hunterstown Speedway, for the mm -hmm. kart race. Um, race there from the time I was seven to the time I was uh, 14. Okay. I uh, have a buddy that's running the adult Yamaha class there, so uh, going to go help him. I climbed in one of his carts a couple years ago, first time I ever ran in the adult class, obviously, because when I quit karting, I was only 14. Um, and that was fun. Um, the car count was kind of low, so hopefully I can get back in one where the car count's better. Mm -hmm. um, those things are fun to drive, though, too. Uh, I mean, it really doesn't matter. I don't care if it's, car, you know, carts or stock car. I mean, it's a blast. Just want to go fast. Yeah. Those, yeah, exactly. Those <laughs> they they probably get a sense of speed to make you feel like you're flying. Oh, my gosh. Miles an hour. Those things, those things at <coughs> 75, 80 miles an hour, mm -hmm. in some cases faster, are amazing. I mean, your butt is an inch and a half <laughs> off the ground, and yeah. it's like, that so oh it's it's so much fun and what's <laughs> what's <laughs> funny about that is that is so different than any other form of racing there is and yet so alike i mean you can't you can't pass there either <laughs> i feel like i'm gonna complain <laughs> everybody's about so equal yeah like it's other than like uh, this is why i love legend cars mm -hmm. but yeah the problem with carts sometimes with no suspension is is a lot of guys can get these things set up like it it's you have to be really, 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 really innovative and up all night to figure out okay. a way to get that cart just to be quicker than everybody else by a lot. Because um, mm -hmm. at most of those places, I mean, now the adult classes are different. Again, I only have one race experience there. But when we were younger and we were restricted to like 70 miles an hour, you're still moving. But the tracks were big enough to where everybody was wide open. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing you can do as a driver. I mean, absolutely nothing. And I do encourage a lot of kids to use that for their first six, seven years in racing. If you start at six or seven, like by the time you're 14 or 15, it's time to get into something else. Mm -hmm. um, you learn the basics of racing. Hopefully you learn a good work ethic if your family makes you work on mm -hmm. that thing. They should. You should be cleaning that cart, working on it, setting it up. Um, but then you need to get in something that teaches you throttle control. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't care if it's dirt, asphalt, just something with power to weight ratio and suspension. Mm -hmm. um, you need to learn throttle control and what it's like to throw weight around. Um, we throw weight in go karts. Don't get me wrong, but it doesn't. There's really not a change in handling. It's like we always went by inches on the steering wheel. Like okay, I'm turning a half inch, maybe more. Now, and that's a big adjustment right there. If wow. and so that's what's funny is. We watched GoPro videos, and if your car was perfect to Hunterstown, you were at like 11.45 on the wheel mm -hmm. the whole way around. So you're barely turning. 
and you're wide open. Wow. And your hands are steady. So I got to be honest with you, as a driver, it's still hard as heck, but you are just not working as hard. Yeah. Um, like if your car can do that and somebody else's can't, you're kicking their butt. I don't care who you are. Hmm. So it it does take talent, but to a point, there's so much more you can learn on other levels that I think a lot of young kids need to experience. Um, but um, still a blast. I'd still, I'd love to build them. I'd love to do both pavement and asphalt. That's something that I got off the pavement when I was younger, so I'd love to run too. I can build on myself yeah. and see, do different things. Because, you know, when we were younger, and of course it doesn't matter as much when you're in the smaller classes, but when you get in the adult class, I feel like, and maybe dirt's different, but for pavement, some guys might laugh at this, some guys might agree. Like, arrow is a big deal. Like, mm. if you're at certain places where you, you're you're all wide open, well, there you go. You're all wide open. Exactly. I mean, you're at full power. You you know, If you're sitting lower and you got that body on the ground, something is going to help like it's <laughs> gotta help <laughs> and at the point where you don't have suspension there's only so many things you can work with i mean tire pressure and weight that's you know stagger that's about about it um so so no there's uh there you can you can turn a science into any race car man mm-hmm. it's great it's i love it <laughs> cool <laughs> figuring out different race cars so should be fun there go back to the roots and enjoy that place Maybe post some pictures, and um, so that's what we'll be uh, up to for the next couple of weeks. Awesome. But. Think it's time? I think it's time. Okay. And remember, don't make fun of my fire suit. Don't make I fun. I like pastels. I I made fun of Brian's fire suit in his dream, y'all. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Apparently, not. I'm hoping you people, nobody's dreaming about me here. But I hope you're not, because apparently I'm a douchebag. In dreams. Yeah, it's it's amazing. You're such a nice guy in person, but in, in yeah. a dream, you're just a dick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll have to uh, I'll have to work on that. I have to, I don't know how. I'll work on it though. <laughs> I forgot. You let me know. I mean, maybe if I hang red fire suits in your in your bedroom, then you won't yeah, want yeah, yellow yeah. fire suits, and maybe I'll be a nicer guy. In, in my dream, you made fun of my yellow fire suit. Yeah, and yellow shoes. And yellow shoes. So I had to go back to the Simpson trailer and get a red fire suit. I might. I might do that in real life. I don't know. But I still had to get the the, uh, the yellow shoes, and you, yes. you made fun of me all again. So, you know. Yeah. Just just try, try, try. I like pastels. Try to be yeah. nice. Did your waistband have a banana boat on it? <laughs> uh, no, I, I guess that'd be cool. Now, now maybe it will. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Hopefully, we've got some more fun stuff to talk about next episode. We didn't have a, have a ton, ton this time, but hopefully we'll have some good news for you guys. And, uh. Thanks again for listening. T-Mac out. Spotter out.